This is authentic footage of Hewer's flying platform from 1957, a military device that was intended to give soldiers the higher ground. It was built more than 70 years ago, an engineering wonder for its time, but Hewer's flying platform pales in comparison with the anti-gravity machine of the Russian scientist Viktor Grebenikov. Viktor's machine was based on a unique discovery. He used the wings of a species of beetles that he kept secret. For years, nobody knew the exact beetle. In this video, I'll not only reveal the supposed species, but i also guide you through the labyrinth of Victor's legendary experiments and show you exactly how you can replicate them on your own. According to Grebenikov's writings, he could fly up to a speed of almost a thousand miles per hour and he was unaffected by wind due to the magnetic field surrounding his device. He soared through the skies, traveling between continents. Then, in a twist of fate, the Russian military seized Victor's work, and the machine that challenged the heavens was forever lost to time, or was it? Since the dawn of society, the greatest minds have been obsessed with flying. Leonardo da Vinci, with his visionary sketches, laid the groundwork for human flight. His inventions, far ahead of their time, whispered of a future where humans could glide through the air like birds. Centuries passed and da Vinci's dreams took wing. Planes ruled the skies, choppers swooshed through the clouds, and even rockets came into existence. But amidst these marvels, one enigma stood apart, anti-gravity. Anti-gravity is something much more fascinating because it defies everything we've known so far. If we're to explore whether Victor's anti-gravity device really functioned, we have to prove that levitation or anti-gravity is possible in the first place. Luckily, someone already did that. And we have it on tape. Reputable UK scientists proved levitation through sound to be possible. They managed to levitate an ant using certain frequencies that created a type of a force field. This achievement was not just a scientific feat, it was a glimpse into the untapped potential of our world. Many speculate that ancient civilizations built the pyramids using similar techniques. Physically, it's possible. Sound is a vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave through a medium like our atmosphere. Given the right frequency and consistency, you can practically ride that wave. Now that we know levitation through sound is possible, we can unravel whether Viktor Grebenikov achieved his mysterious levitation the same way. Or perhaps he found out how to create something much more powerful. An inertial mass reduction device, or what normal people would call anti-gravity. In my pursuit of debunking whether Grebenikov faked his famous photo or not, I accidentally discovered how UFOs are built to fly at insane speeds. I'll reveal that too, and I hope the FBI doesn't break down my door. FBI, After several experts examined this photo, in which Victor is levitating on the platform, they concluded that it wasn't digitally modified in any way. But let's get back to the beginning to see how he built the device. One sunny afternoon, as Viktor Grebenikov was lying in a green field under the sun, a metallic taste crept into his mouth. He felt an ease and suddenly he got so disoriented that he was about to vomit. He got up and moved 10 feet away from the place he was standing and immediately got better. When he returned to the place to pick up his belongings, Rebenikov felt ill in a matter of seconds. Upon closer examination, he realized that right beneath the spot where he was lying down, there was an underground beehive and from the vibration of the buzzing bees, his organs and blood were feeling out of place. He returned several times to this location, testing out whether the bee buzz affected him at different times and in different weather conditions. Each time, the results were the same. He came back a few months later to the location and found out that the beehive was dead. Regardless, he took a big slice of it in his backpack and went to his laboratory. Then, during some tests, Victor placed a mechanical clock over it and noticed that it would disturb the accuracy of his clock. 
But why was this happening? If the vibrations were key, as he thought, and they were gone now, then what was causing this effect? There were no bees anymore to vibrate there. Rebenikov then tested the hive on himself. He noticed that it would affect his hand when he would put it over the comp. Several other people did the same, and they would experience different sensations. Hot or cold waves, numbing, and feeling of unease. But none of this could be documented using a scientific device, as thermometers or ultrasound devices weren't affected by the beehive. He had unintentionally rediscovered what Oscar Korschelt was granted a patent for. A hundred years prior, in 1893, the cavity structure effect. Cavity structures affect human bodies due to the supercurrents and electromagnetic radiation that they enhance. Remember this one, it plays a major role in the technology UFOs use to fly. And I promise you, we will uncover that in 2-3 to three minutes. According to many scientists, larger beetles shouldn't be physically able to fly due to their huge weight and subpar wings. In his pursuit of discovering how these bugs can fly, Viktor Grebenikov discovered that tiny cavity structures were present on the wings of certain beetles. Those beetles were combining the cavity structures with vibration through movement and thus defying gravity by levitating rather than flying. Sound is connected to frequencies and vibrations. This means that if we have a real anti-gravity device, it would not use copters like a chopper or internal combustion like a plane, and instead it would defy time, space and gravity. All UFOs we've heard of are supposedly of this type. In 1947, the famous Roswell UFO crash happened. After going through the classified documents, we can find that just the very next year, in 1950, the CIA started working on anti-gravity devices, which means most likely they were reverse engineering the UFO they'd found. Instead of reverse engineering a UFO, Victor reverse engineered the wings of a beetle in the form of a hovercraft that he would step on, found out that they repel each other in the form of electromagnetic fields. Using the same technology, he created a device that would amplify an electromagnetic field through the cavity structural effect that we mentioned before. Anything he pushed on this device would instantly get thrown into the air. Ever since, for years, enthusiasts have been searching desperately to find that beetle to replicate this levitation effect. Rebenikov kept the beetle species a secret because he was an animal lover. But I found someone who knows the beetle species. And he told me, I'll share it after I show you how to recreate Victor's famous photo and experiment. Grebenikov was then rumored to have created the infamous hovercraft scooter. But is it real? Does it really work? And could a device like that exist in real life? First of all, we saw Hewer's version of a hover scooter that existed. My best guess is that Grebenikov stole the design from Hewer. You can see the resemblance. As we mentioned earlier, the photo of Grebenikov levitating isn't digitally faked. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't faked or staged. And Victor's grandson confirmed just that, and he should know. He helped him, faking the photo. And here is how they did it. They used a glass jar on which Victor stepped with his hover platform. He specifically chose a background that would allow him to sandpaper the shadow of the jar and remove it. According to Victor's grandson, he'd seen the hovercraft, never shared whether it worked or not. After Victor's works were censored, his grandson said it was all a fake. Probably pressed by the authorities, but how would we know? Why would they fake this photo? Well, there's a sequence of events that explains that. And here's what happened according to Victor Grebenikov's grandson. Victor created a hovercraft. Not long after, he either dismantled or hid it. Although over 10 people reported a strange light swooshing in the sky over the area, Nobody could confirm whether it was Victor or not. He then tried to publish his book alongside colorful images of his demonstration, but the publishers cut down the majority of his book, reducing it by double to only 400 pages. They also eliminated most images. Most likely, the authorities got to them, and later to Victor. He wanted to somehow spike the interest of the masses and allow anyone to access his knowledge. With the help of his grandson, he faked the photo to inspire new generations. 
They created a platform out of gypsum and faked the photo by standing on top of the glass jar. He didn't want his knowledge to be lost and censored. For Victor to have flown at the speed of a thousand miles per hour, there would be only two logical explanations. First, he wasn't just levitating, instead, his machine was working like an inertial mass reduction device. So you were able to cancel out gravity to a certain degree. You How were you able like to that? cancel, Precisely. reduce the mass gravity effect. Precisely. By, okay. by opposing fields. Isn't that nice? You, you bet. And got nine signatures and what? I always skip, you know. You I, did that at Lockheed? What, what year was this? Oh, uh, at least eight years ago. This is um, the actual document of Boyd's where he proved that by altering the, the field in a falling body, the magnetic field, it reduced its mass gravity equivalent and canceled out the uh, effects of gravity to a certain percentage. Space time and gravity are all essentially interrelated. They all act on one another. Gravity bends space. Gravity also distorts time. This means that through cavities he created high frequency electromagnetic waves that would surround the vehicle and polarize a vacuum just around him. If you're wondering where I know this from, here's one of many potential UFO patterns that work the same way. This patent describes the mechanics of how a UFO flies and it uses absolutely the same technology Victor discovered. However, if Victor really flew using that, he should have worn an oxygen mask paired with an astronaut suit because inside the vacuum created by this device, he would have suffocated within a few minutes without oxygen. And his blood would deoxygenize. And the second possibility is that he may have edited his works and perhaps why to all of us for an un unknown reason. I, I don't know which one of these to believe. But I know that this technology is something we, as humanity, have already achieved and we are using. Let me show you in the next part. Viktor Grebenikov dedicated his life to insects and to expanding the human knowledge and helping people through his unorthodox inventions. He got no personal favor out of publishing his work. Before we rule out whether he lied or not, let's look at this. This is him doing his experiments with beetle wings. They strung and they are levitating. And this is how you can easily fake this. This stuff is called invisible thread and I just happened to have some. I used it a long time ago <laughs> and it's just been sitting in my closet. There are hundreds of threads in this little uh, strand here. You pick one, you pull it out, and it's that thin. Hope you can make that out. Anyway, it comes with wax, and you stick a little bit of wax on whatever you want to hover, and then stick the string to the wax, and there you go. Let's see if we can get that sway. Look familiar? Okay. There we go. Well, that's how I did it. <clears throat> I'm not saying it, he necessarily faked it, but it sure as hell looks very similar. For those of you who want to try, I found a person who knows a supposed species of beetles. Drubenikov lived in Eastern Europe, and an acquaintance of mine said that he achieved the experiment's results with a small beetle called Lithosotonia, and it perfectly fits the description. I haven't tried it yet, but if anyone does, let me know in the comments below. There is another species that can levitate using electromagnetic fields of the Earth. Almost every small spider you've ever seen holds the key to levitation. Spiders can sense and surf on electric charges in the Earth's atmosphere. As the spider releases its silk, the strands pick up negative charges, and since like charges repel each other, the silk is pushed up and away from the negatively charged surfaces. Some spiders fly like that for hundreds of miles. So it's physically doable. And remember the UFO patent I showed you? How do we know it's real and functional? Well, we know, because we have plenty of footage of a real UFO with the exact same triangular shape that we saw in the pattern. And we've got it from both cameras and satellites. It looks the same to me. You can decide for yourself. We we'll most likely never find out decisive evidence about Viktor Grebenikov, but we found a scientific patent for a flying machine that uses the same technology as his scooter. And not only that, 
but we found evidence of it being used in real life by the triangular UFO. We found a potential beetle species and practically explained that flying with the help of electromagnetism is entirely possible. What we can take away from this story is that whether Victor achieved anti-gravity or not, it is entirely physically possible to do it. So this should give some weight to the story. Perhaps in this world, know so little of, you could become the next inventor or we can build something together. If you are into secret inventions, you'd definitely love to hear about Wilhelm Reich's Orgon inventions and how I built them. They work. Check the next video. You will be amazed.